Hey, this is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat interview, and I'm here this morning with uh, Jim. Jim, hello. Howdy. Thank you for inviting me. Well, Jim, for folks that don't know you, I know you're a newer MVP. Why don't you give us the, the entire history in like a, a minute of uh, Jim Wilcox? All right. So it's kind of funny, actually. I was thinking about this. I, I met uh, my first MVPs back in, uh, in 2012, and it realized that they were actually all named Chris. Uh, you and, and Chris Bortlick and Chris Bowen and yeah. well, Bortlick, Bortlick wasn't an MVP though. He's, he's the Microsoft guy, but he, he's one of those people, like if they would expand the program, cause there are certain Microsoft people like Bortlick who go above and beyond on the community side. I mean, it's not part of their job description, the stuff that they do, the support for the user groups and for like in our space, like the SharePoint Saturday events and, and the SQL Saturdays and all of that. Um, like there's Gennady and Bortlick and, and now Eric Harlan, uh, you know, just things like folks like that, that just do a tremendous amount for the community. Absolutely. But, yeah. but anyway, back to you. Uh, you know, all right, yeah. Where, where yeah, are uh, you? Who do you work with? All that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm Jim Wilcox. I'm the, I go by the moniker, the Granite State Hacker. I've been uh, working with the community for, gosh, you know, probably about uh, a decade at this point. Um, uh, right now, I'm with uh, Insight Digital Innovation. Uh, we're a consulting company formerly known as Blue Metal. Uh, a lot of people know Blue Metal Architects, um, but uh, I'm a, a .NET guy. Um, any any opportunity to do C Sharp, especially with a compiler, um, that's that's kind of home for me. And and uh, I've been having a lot of fun lately with. Um, little bit of all kinds of stuff uh, from a little bit of mobile, a little bit of desktop, a little bit of Azure cloud services, um, functions, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and interestingly enough, a little bit of a rebirth in um, uh, legacy .NET framework stuff because now there's this cool path forward to .NET Core and, and all that stuff. So um, we're seeing a lot of modernization in terms of, of bringing uh, .NET Framework up to .NET Core and getting it ready for new .NET 5 stuff coming down the pike, which you know is very exciting. It, you know, it's, it's really interesting there. Well, actually, let me first ask, so your MVP is in what? Uh, it's in developer technologies. It's so developer technology space. And uh, I was trying to, I was going to liken it to like, a, um, you know, a, a, like a, the U.S. version of The Office, like a joke about, uh, you know, uh, where uh, I think Jim was making fun of Dwight for like, a, what is the latest that's happening with the thousands year old karate? You know, what new changes have happened? It's almost like, I think like that with some of the old technologies, like the, like what exciting things are happening with this old, it's like, tell me about COBOL. Let's, what are the exciting things happening with COBOL? Um, yeah. I mean, there are always uh, interesting things going on with some of the you know, older technology. So, I mean, what's, what's happening for folks that aren't following what's happening with .NET Core? So, with, with .NET, .NET Core, it's, it's all, they're, they're trying to bring it back together again. And it's, uh, you know, because for the past few years, it's been a little bit fragmented and a little bit of an unclear story. Um, but they're really bringing everything back together again. It's like getting the band back together and uh, everybody's pretty excited about it. It's um, all the things that you loved about uh, the, the .NET framework stuff combined with all the new stuff that people love about Windows 10 functionality that you couldn't get in the .NET framework is now kind of converging on this new thing that they're coming out with very shortly called .NET 5. So. That's very exciting stuff. So, so what kind of stuff? I mean, you, you, are you out actively presenting on any of these these topics, talking about it, or is it like brand brand new? Is it like it's going on as we speak, and so you're not yet out um, out and talking so, about it? So, no, actually, uh, a lot of it's fairly well known. Um, I've been doing presentations. Actually, I, I'm fairly diverse. I do presentations about uh, Uno platform, which is. Um, not just uh, converging all of everything into um, uh, C Sharp and .NET and all that stuff, but making it so that you can target um, iPhone and Android as well. 
I've also been talking about uh, bot framework stuff, so artificial intelligence and um, you know chats and a little bit of Teams integration and and that sort of thing. So that's how I'm kind of keeping myself in the uh, in the office world. But um, uh, and um, gosh, what else? Uh, I I still love to to tell about what's going on with um, you know the language details like C sharp as a language, you know, they, they keep on adding features and functionality to it. And I always love to have the opportunity to tell people about, uh, you know, new, new um, syntax and functionality that's, that's coming along in the C-sharp language that um, uh, you get to take advantage of uh, much more expressive, uh, you know, syntax that you can um, do a lot more powerful things uh, than you could before. So. Well, you know, and we were talking, of course, I, so I participated in the, uh, so the Granite Bay user group, uh, kind of online stuff. You, you guys are getting together. Uh, how often are you getting together online now? Um, so I've been doing the, uh, the uh, Granite State Code Review nightly, literally uh, every weeknight um, since the, since everything went virtual for the uh, coronavirus stuff. But yeah. So, uh, other than that, I, I have, uh, I host meetups as a normal rule a couple of times a month and then, you know, events, uh, in and beyond that as, as, uh, often as they arise. So, um, and those are everything from Granite State Code Camp to, uh, you know, Teams Thursday, New England to SharePoint Saturdays that I've been working on for years out here in the, the, um, New England area. So. Yeah, so I mean, because I know you had a you know a full plate of events and things going on. I mean, it, it, pretty much across the board is all that stuff. Are 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 they? Because not some events are are postponing or canceling and rescheduling out in advance. We were talking about last night, like you have Mark Radley's the event that his team is putting on the North American Collab Summit in uh, Branson, Missouri, and that got pushed out to September. And so everybody's like crossing their fingers of whether people will even show up in September, depending on what the new normal looks like. Um, yeah. And I had an event, as I was talking, the first week in June over in Germany. Uh, so that was the, the European Collab Summit that's going on. But other events like our beloved MVP Summit, your first one. Mm, yes. You know, yeah. So did, had you booked flights already? Uh, yes, we had. Uh, in fact, I still have my tickets. Um, uh, some point I'll I'll figure out what to do with them. You know I'm I'm looking forward to getting out to to visit the the Seattle area again someday soon. But yeah, yeah that's that's rough for for those that aren't aware to this. So the MVP Summit is an annual get together of of all the MVPs and uh, from all over the world. And so it's pretty amazing to see you know three or four thousand people for a week. And I think it's that many. I don't know how many actually show up, but uh, it feels like more. Uh, but then because you have all the Microsoft people around and basically we get to go deep insights and ask questions and, and get uh, roadmap walkthroughs and tons of NDA stuff. Um, but it's it's not even the content. I mean, there's always so much you learn from that. Uh, and then, of course, share our personal and our customer experiences back with Microsoft. So it's it's a really powerful tool for them to uh, collect information and validate uh, theories on where products are going and roadmaps, all that stuff. But also, of course, to connect with each other and develop relationships and business partnerships and all that kind of stuff. So you can't do a lot of that online, most of that. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that. it's, it's rough. I admit, I, yeah, I, I love the opportunity to represent the Granite State back to Microsoft. So, you know, that's that's awesome as far as I'm concerned. There, there was some nice opportunity to connect um, at, at MVP Summit online. We did it all in Teams, of course. And um, the nice part about that was that, um, you know, when, when somebody says something at a live event, you know, it's, it's very uh, immediate. Um, there's, there's no real opportunity to catch up with it afterwards. But um, when somebody says something online, it, it sticks around and you have the chance to to catch up with what people were talking about and and that sort of thing. So I do appreciate that aspect of the online part of it, but mm -hmm. um but at the same time there's there's nothing like, you know, actually being face to face with people in in uh, a room full of like-minded individuals is uh always a, an opportunity that you don't want to miss, but you know, 
This. Well, well, that we've had that, and I'm sure I would love to get your feedback too. Is that that's been the problem with a lot of user groups? I mean, across the board, you hear of of regional user groups where their numbers have been going down and down and down. And part of that is driven by, you know, the topics that you're covering. And, and of course you get the diehards of the people that participate every single time. Um, but for, for new folks, it might be a, a big name speaker that you bring in or a topic that's something that's, that's groundbreaking topic or brand new and bleeding edge. And they want to hear more about it. Um, you know, the, it's difficult with all that, happening the you know the kind of the downward trend of of user groups and more and more people moving things to online what's been you know, prior to all of this before this all happened with COVID-19 um, what were you guys doing were you moving to more of an online or were you still doing the face-to-face -face on a monthly basis so I tended to want to stay face to face um, just because I see lots of, uh, you know, there's lots of pre recorded content and, and that sort of thing. Um, but the FaceTime is, is something that you just kind of can't really miss out on. You can't, you can't go back and do it again. You can't watch it later. Um, you know, and, and that adds value to it in and of itself. So, so I was, kind of feeling a little bit like we had lost some of our attendance because for a while we were doing things online and people would just kind of stop attending you know they'd, they'd say all right i'm gonna catch it when i get home okay well i'll catch a recording well all right maybe they won't you know um i've fallen victim to it myself uh where where i intended to be, you know, part of some online thing and, and missed out and ended up just saying, all right, I'll catch the recording and, you know, someday I will. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, but what's the, what's the answer? I mean, what's the, what's the right mix of that? Uh, do you have any thought? I mean, purely your opinion. What's, what, what are, what's the way to, to handle this? What should user groups be doing? Um, so right now there's, there's just no choice. And the nice part about that is, is, is that, um, you know, we're experiencing what that's like in the, in the coronavirus, uh, isolations, um, just seeing, you know, what it's like to have these, these user group meetings. We're not really recording them. Uh, you know, they're, they're just, you know, get together, see how every form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and in in this particular case, it's really more about just having the human connection, seeing what we can, you know, what we can do to help each other out. Um, ostensibly, it's all about code, but you know, the reality is is that we're we're just trying to make sure that everybody's okay and and uh, keep in touch with people that we care about. And, um, you know, so. That's uh, that's what we're doing right now. Um, going forward, I I think uh, it probably makes sense to come up with kind of a hybrid, like um, you know, do these things maybe online occasionally, and and then do them in person when you can, when it feels like everybody wants to get together and have a slice of pizza and a beer or something. Uh, maybe go from there. So. Yeah, we're we were thinking we were toying with the idea. Uh, I was out, kind of outvoted on it. We're like we're sticking with the before all this happened, of course, with the monthly face to face. Which I get it. The, the problem for me is where I am and the the time that we have our meetings. We were holding them from four to six, uh, and it could take forty five minutes to an hour for me to get to the location, and then some traffic. You know, getting back and it was just so that was a big chunk of of that day, and it was just a difficult day um to 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 get out and and do that like tuesdays and thursdays are like my my busiest days of the week usually yeah because um, yep. i've just got you know client meetings stacked up and so to drive and spend all that time away from the home office and so what i had suggested was a getting together quarterly so still doing that but uh getting together quarterly and doing a bigger push around that and then everything else online and we'll see i think i because I, I think to your point this experience of being forced to be entirely virtual has given people that were reluctant to give it a try, I think a taste of, hey, here's what could work and here's some things that we could be doing. Um, I agree with you, it can't be 100%. It just can't be. Um, and they're, they're, I've always been an advocate for even if you're doing monthly face-to-face -to, -face, um, to, to do something different, like on a quarterly basis, 
have a breakfast get together with somebody on a topic, but that were it's more social to do pure social, no topics of uh, doing like a share pint type thing where you know people to get together that are drinking, not drinking, and just congregate. We did we did that always in uh, Bellevue when I lived for twelve years in the Seattle area and had some fantastic locations uh, downtown Bellevue. Uh, and we'd always get a great crowd of 15, 20 people for those things. Just, you know, we'd publish it same day, like, hey, we're going to do this. And people would show up. It's like so, a flash mob social. Yeah, but, it, but it's important <laughs> to have those connections and talk about other stuff than hearing somebody present and people, different people, usually the same people, asking questions and things around it and just mixing it up. Um, and uh, because you tend to see, uh, my experiences. I'd love to hear yours, but uh, you know, that you get the regulars that show up with a, a you know some new people, but you generally the in-person events here in Salt Lake, we'd get you know twenty people showing up. Um, ten of them would be the regulars, and then there'd be ten new people that we'd never see again. Every two, single time, there's these new people that just show up, and and they're usually topic-driven, speaker-driven, um, and and so it's good to do that. And then of course online, you get. You can have speakers from around the world. You can, uh, and then, you know, you might have 10, 15 people that are watching in real time and then hundreds of people that watch the recording, you know, within the next couple of months. So, yeah, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So, so given, given the, the state of things and where we are and events being shut down, what do you have going on? What's coming up? Are you uh -huh. doing any webinars? Are you doing any talks? Uh, actually, uh, we've got Teams Thursday New England that uh, was originally supposed to be literally yesterday. Um, uh, yeah, how'd that work out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it was still on my calendar and I, you know. Shed a tear, yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, actually very much looking forward to, uh, to being a part of that. It's going to be on uh, June 3rd. Um, as a virtual, I expect a virtual event at this point, um, because we've been talking about actually having it at, um, uh, in Burlington, uh, you know, Burlington, Mass, the, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and basically, um, you know, at this point, things look like they're going to be extended into, into June, who knows how much longer, um, we'll see, but, um, hopefully it'll be there, it'll be in person, and that'd be great. You know, but uh, reality is we're probably going to have Teams Thursday on a Tuesday on Teams. So <laughs> <laughs> Teams Tuesday still still have that you know, going for you. Yep. Yep. So so people want to find out more about you, like the active blogger. Where can they find you out on social? What do you what are you active on and participating in? So I happen to be in Twitter. Uh, you can find me as uh, Granite State Hacker there. Um, I am also on uh, LinkedIn. I have a, a blog um, called, well, it's part of Granite State Users Groups, which is an organization that I, I um, have to help manage finances for lots of different local events and uh, that sort of thing. And, uh, so we have a website and that's where I keep my blog and, and all that stuff. That's uh, granitestateusersgroups.net. So, um, Very cool. Well, Jim, I really appreciate your time, taking some time out on uh, your Friday and uh, enjoy the weekend. Stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Likewise, you too. Thank you so much and uh, happy Friday. <laughs> happy Friday. <laughs>